On this episode of Loom with a Classic, we start to disassemble the engine on my 1975 XJ6. Welcome back to Loom with a Classic and Happy New Year everyone, Happy 2020. And what a video to start 2020 with. We're going to start to disassemble the engine on the 1975 XJ6 with the blown head gasket. If you're new to my channel, I hope you stuck around and consider subscribing so you don't miss any updates, especially on this car. There will be some great video series coming up on getting it back on the road, placing the head gasket, getting the engine nice and running again, rebuilding some SU carbs, and also how to tune SU carbs. So stay subscribed so you don't miss any of that. So on this video, I'm going to start the disassembly of the engine. There's a lot that has to come off uh, in the engine bay just to be able to get the cylinder head off. So let's head over to the car and start taking things off. The first thing to remove is the hood to get some extra access. You can definitely remove it alone, but having a helper helps a lot. You don't want to chip any of that paint. Lay some towels or blankets on the front bumper so you can rest the hood on it when you remove the six bolts that holds it on. With some great help from my dad, we got the hood off. So now it's time to remove everything up front here. I'm gonna remove this radiator cross member, get the radiator out, leave the oil cooler in there, and then start taking all the carbs off and the exhaust manifolds and just free everything up so we can start taking this head off. But first, I'm going to take off the front here, it's just held with these three bolts on both sides and a few electrical connections and then the radiator should be three to take out. The next thing is to drain the coolant. I've chosen to cut the coolant hoses basically because I'm replacing all of them. It's a lot easier and faster just to cut them now than having to undo clamps to remove them. So if you're getting new coolant hoses, just cut the old ones off, it's a lot quicker. Now the radiator is out, it was just held in place with those two bolts there at the bottom. You can just lift it out. Looks to be in excellent condition, can't see any leaks from it. Looks to be fairly new, it's definitely not original to the car, it must have been replaced at some point. So I'm just going to be flushing it out and then it can go back in the car again, so that's great news. So the next thing is to remove the fan shroud and the fan, get some more access to things on the front of the engine get the carb assembly off, and then of course the exhaust manifolds. While I'm taking anything off the car, I'm having a look at it, testing it, checking it, making a list if I need to replace things, because I'm just gonna order all the parts at once to of course save on shipment and time. So for instance, the uh, viscous coupling here on the fan, on these older style couplings, you're supposed to be able to spin the fan and then it should stop pretty soon. Maximum like one and a half to two revolutions. This is definitely good shape, so I can go back on again. Before I do all this, I do want to remove those two bolts there to get the heat shield off from the exhaust so I can spray some penetrating fluid on all the nuts here because those are the ones I'm expected to be on. They're pretty tight and could be difficult to get off, so I'm going to give them a lot of time to soak. Everything else I've had access to, I've already soaked in penetrating fluid for a couple days, but these can't get access to, so I'm gonna start by getting this off and then we'll start in the fan shroud and all of that.
now the twin SU carbs are ready to come off. I've disconnected the fuel pipe down there and plugged it. Disconnected the, the hose that feeds air to the choke. I removed the pipes up here for the PCV. Removed some other vacuum lines that goes to the distributor. And removed the eight nuts that holds them in place. I plan on removing everything as a unit. It's all loose now, so it's going to come out as one unit. And I'll set it aside and go through this later. Here's the whole carb assembly off the car. It's really easy to take out as one big unit if you leave the back of the air filter on. And this is great if you're just replacing the head gasket and you know that your carbs are fine, you wanna put them back. However, I'm gonna go through these and restore them. So for those of you looking forward to an SU video, there'll be an upcoming video on cleaning these up, making them look really nice and restoring them. And then there'll be a few video later when everything's back in the car on how to tune SU carbs. So you've been looking forward to that. You'll know that that's coming pretty soon. Now the intake manifold is ready to come off. I removed the bracket for the throttle and the kickdown cable. Vacuum connection there, one over there. I cut the hose down there by the thermostat housing and I removed the connector for the temperature sender. And then it was just about, I think about 18 uh, nuts here. Now it should just come off. The next part to take off are the two banjo bolts, one there, one over there. They feed oil to the camshafts. It's very important not to forget those. They are pretty easy to forget because they're just all the way tucked back here. After that, I'm going to remove the cam covers. And then the front cover here for the PCV that covers the chain tensioner. The next job is to remove the cam sprockets from the camshafts. I've already slackened the tension on the timing chain here. Or actually, it was already all the way slack, let's say, because clockwise is loosening and anti-clockwise is tightening the chain. So maybe some previous owner or mechanic thought that he was tightening the chain by turning it clockwise. Who knows? So I'll check that when I put everything back together. There was no chain rattle when the engine ran, but it was all the way loose, at least. I've removed all the spark plugs as well. So now I can turn the engine over by hand really easily. It's at zero degrees uh, top dead center right now. You can see the notches up here. You use the cam alignment tool when you put everything back together. So this is where I want the engine when I'm gonna take the head off. However, as you can see, there are four bolts on each sprocket and I can't get to those two there or those two there. These are the ones I want to loosen last. So I'm going to turn the engine over so I can get to the other ones. Let's see, a little bit more. And those are those two there and those two there. So I'm going to take those off, rotate the engine again complete revolution. So I'm at top dead center again and the notches are up here. Then we'll remove the last two bolts and then we can just move these to the side. I took those four bolts out. I rotated engine over so it's at top dead center. The notches are up here as well. Now I'm going to take these last eight out. It's a bit of a nerve wracking thing taking these out because the last thing you want to do is drop them down in the sump because then a head removal has just turned into let's take the engine out of the car and take the whole thing apart. So take your time when you're undoing them. They're quite short. So do them with a the tool a little bit until they're loose and then be very, very careful when you take them out. There's a washer as well, so make sure that that comes out with it. You see, they're pretty short. So I'm gonna take out the last ones of those and then we're gonna put the cam sprockets to the side. The cam sprockets are completely loose from the camshafts now. I just put these little zip ties on here just to make it completely idiot proof. So there's no way for the chain to jump a tooth. Uh, so there's these built-in little 
holders for the cam sprockets here, which is really cool next K engine. So you can just pull them forward and push them to the side. So you can do that here on both sides. So now they're out of the way. Now it can actually start to take the head off. You can start by removing the bolts that go up here on the front. And then we're gonna loosen the dome nuts up here in the opposite order of how you would tighten them when you put it back on. All right, it's time to remove the 14 dome nuts that holds the cylinder head on. Uh, this is a long stud engine, so this, the cylinder head studs, they go all the way down into the block really far. The last thing you want is for them to be undone down there. They can be damaged by corrosion and might just snap off. If that happens, we'll have to deal with that then. I've talked to a couple experts who um, just restore these engines on a daily basis, and they've all told me that they think I should use an electric uh, sort of air hammer to remove these. I'm usually not a fan of electric tools, but the knocking effect of this one set on really low, I have a bigger chance of getting the dome nuts off without getting the studs off down there. Because they say if I put a big breaker bar on here, uh, firstly, I might break the studs, and secondly, I might unwind them down there, which I don't want to happen. So, wish me luck. Let's see if we can get these off. Overall, I'd say that was a success. Nothing snapped, nothing broke off. Yes, three of the um, head studs came out, but it came out cleanly, didn't break off, and the threads look really nice. Here is one of them. You see the threads are still great on it. There's absolutely no corrosion on it. So I think this engine has been really well taken care of because these look almost brand new. So hopefully all the other ones are as nice. So I'm gonna take various types of lubrication spray it and pour it down in here try and loosen everything up let that sit for a week or so and then we're going to try to get this head off and hopefully it will come off pretty easily i'm starting to feel really positive because if the head studs look like this the ones that came out i mean they just pulled straight up if all the other ones look the same this head is going to come off no problem at all and that's it for today's episode i'm going to continue to spray lubrication down those cylinder head studs for a few days then we'll get back to that engine and try to lift the head off. So in the next episode, I promise we'll have the cylinder head off and we can have a look at it. But until next time, I'm Adam and this was Luma for Classic. I'll see you soon.